Hello Media Arts 1, 2, and Independent Study students. For the activities that we completed on November 12th and 13th, we did two activities. So the first thing you're gonna to have to do is make sure that you prep your watercolors. We are gonna be using our primary, our secondary, and tertiary colors. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, please go back into Google Classroom and check out the warm-up mini project videos posted for the beginning of the week that being November 9th and 10th, um, and please complete those color mixing. So on a brand new piece of paper in your sketchbook, I want you to section off this um, piece of paper into two sides, one saying warm, one saying cold or cool, and then you're gonna put a line down the middle. On the left-hand side of your page, I want you to put the warm colors. And what I mean by warm is you're going to be putting down the watercolors, the secondary, primary, and tertiary colors that relate to the two seasons of summer and fall. So there's going to be red, yellow, orange, red violet, yellow orange, and red orange. Versus on the other side are going to be your cool or cold colors. These colors are always going to be in relation to spring and winter. So the colors that you are going to color swatch onto this side of your page are going to be blue, violet, green, blue, violet, yellow, green, and blue, green. Why do you guys need to know this is because when we are working with watercolor, you are going to be learning to pick and choose colors that complement each other or work together. Sometimes it's only using warm colors. Sometimes it's only using cool colors, but with you guys having this available to you, you're going to be understanding what I mean by warm and cold. <clears throat> In addition to your watercolors and having the primary, secondary, and tertiary colors prepped and mixed on your mixing palette, please also have the following. You are going to need some form of masking tape. If you have washi tape floating around your house, you can use that. You can use masking or scotch tape, but do not use duct tape because that is too um, kind of tough for what we're going to be doing. Some additional items to have is saran wrap or maybe it's like really thin plastic have salt, Oops. have some crayons of some kind, and I think that might be it. <clears throat> oh, and have, yes, yeah, have some extra tape. All right, so on a brand new piece of paper, your choice if you want to orient the long page, long side of your page facing you or the short side, it's up to you. You are going to take pieces of tape and organize and put it down in very, like sections and I'll show you what to do. But the first thing you've got to do is this. Before you even stick tape onto your paper, you have to take your tape and then stick it either to your thigh or to a, your carpet. Because what you're essentially doing is you're lifting up, I don't know if you can see it on my camera. You are lifting up all of the like fibers of your article of clothing. Why we're doing this is so that when we peel off this tape later, you're not going to rip your paper later. So on your paper, start laying down strips of, of tape in some really cool like angles or sections. We need to make about seven sections because we are going to be painting within those sections. So while I'm doing this, please pause your video and make about six to eight sections on your whole page. <clears throat> it's really critical that you try and um, stick that tape to your leg or to a piece of fabric because we are going to be taking this tape off when we are done painting. Okay, so please put hit pause and continue filling your page. Okay, so I finished filling my paper with a whole bunch of tape. So now we're gonna get started. So I mentioned earlier that we are gonna be using a combination of warm and cool colors. So for the sake of time, I'm gonna be using kind of some already made paint. So my paint colors are gonna be a lot different from yours, but they're still gonna be watercolor. So the first watercolor technique that I'm gonna teach you is called a wash. A wash is a thin, transparent, translucent layer of paint on your paper. And there are multiple ways how to put a wash down on paper, but I'm gonna show you one way that can create an even 
an even wash. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this on my largest piece here. Okay. When you are completing washes, tilt your paper a little bit. Okay. Load up your brush with paint pigment, and then you're going to paint, do one swipe. And so what you are seeing right now is a bead of water. And so as you swipe, you're going to try and bring that bead of water or pigment down along your page. See that bead? Sorry, guys. <clears throat> so I have my paper tilted and I'm just swiping my brush, bringing that bead down my paper. The trick, though, is to try not to allow that bead to drip because we don't want that. As you're working down the paper, be mindful of how much water is on your brush or how much is collecting on your sides and on the bottom. So see that bead? I'm gonna just reuse the last bit of that. And with the help of gravity, I made a even wash. And I'm going to soak up a little bit of that. Okay. As watercolor suggests, watercolor has the word water in, in it. So you should be able to see the paper through your pigments, through your paint. Watercolor is not thick and dense like acrylic and tempera paint. If it is, there is a paint that uh, is dense like acrylic, but watercolor shouldn't do that. Okay. So I'm going to do that again, but I'm not going to use that tilted method. I'm just going to quickly fill that area with another color. Okay. <clears throat> All right. As my paint is waiting to dry, I'm going to teach you another method. So in the still wet area, again, I'm paying attention to my water control. My paper is glossy. I'm going to take a second color, this one red, and I'm going to paint and do some squiggles on that area. Notice what happens when wet paint touches wet paper. That color diffuses and fans out. This method is called wet on wet. And you can use wet on wet to make some really nice backgrounds or to have some really soft diffused colors. It's up to you what you want to use wet on wet for. There really is no set thing to use wet on wet. It's up to you, honestly. Okay, I'm going to do another wash because I am going to be needing it later. later. Okay. And I'm going to do it in the same way that I first taught you. So tilting my paper and dragging that bead down. I have a lot of paint on this brush, so making sure I bring it down my paper. Nope, ran out. So I'm bringing it down. Notice how even my pigment is as I move across my paper. Okay. And there's a little bit of collecting liquid there. So I'm going to take my brush and just kind of absorb that. Okay, that's good. All right. All right, so that is still wet. Remember that salt I told you to grab? Take a little pinch and just sprinkle it on those standing wet areas. When you add salt to watercolor, salt is going to absorb the color and pull that liquid into the salt. And with time, and also with the pressure in this video, you're going to see kind of what that does. So we'll leave that alone a little bit. Okay. This guy looks almost dry. I'm going to mix another color. Remember, my paints are going to be a little bit different from yours because for the sake of time in this video, I'm using what I have on my palette. Okay. So I just put down some color really quickly. And then what I'm gonna do, I rinse my brush. I have a sponge, you can use a paper towel. It honestly does not matter what you use as long as you dry off your brush completely, it's clean. And then you are gonna do what is called a color lift out. So. I drug my dry brush, mostly dry brush, and drug out that color and wiped my brush clean to remove that color. Your paintbrush is lifting out, absorbing that color that is on the paper. This is a really cool technique if, let's say, you messed up and you wanted to like redo an area. So I'm going to have to move. There we go. Or if you're wanting to do a really cool 
texture effect. Honestly, there are endless possibilities when it comes to color liftouts. The trick is just to make sure that brush is clean each time you lift out that color. Okay. All right, so that's one technique. This next one, I'm going to use a dark blue, and this one can be really tricky. So we know how to do a tilted wash. Now I'm going to show you how to do a gradient wash. So I loaded up my brush with some blue. I'm going to do a little swatch here. Here's the cool part. One dip into the water, brush. Bringing that color down, dip in the water, brush. What you're doing is creating dip, a gradient wash. A gradient wash is where the color is transitioning from dark to light down the paper. Remember value shading? This is the colored version of it. And the cool thing too, let's say you're like, oh, it's not blue enough. You can go back and actually add color back in. And so I want to have this blue working its way down more. So it means I got to be careful how much water I put on this guy as I allow that color to move down across my paper. Okay. And that is a gradient wash. Okay, <clears throat> so this guy is dry. I'm gonna use that blue again. This method is called wet on dry. Wet is the paint, dry is the paper. Notice what happens and how much more vibrant and how much more control my paint is versus the wet on wet. So when watercolorists paint, they're using not just one technique, but multiple techniques to achieve certain effects, looks, and kind of levels of softness and darkness. Okay, so that's wet on wet. I'm gonna do another tilted wash just so that I have it on my paper. So that way I remember what that looks like. And you saw me dip my brush um, because I had a lot of pigment on that on my brush. So. <clears throat> so there you go. All right, so take a look at that salt and see what it's doing. It's leaving all that color. That's pretty cool. All right, this next one is gonna be with that plastic or a little bit of saran wrap that you picked up. So lay down a little bit of color. It doesn't matter which one. I'm using a kind of like a pink color. Again, my colors are gonna be a lot different from yours is because I'm using what's in my, my personal watercolor palette. But you can use a combination of warm and cool colors. Okay. All right, so that layer of paint's down taking that saran wrap or piece of plastic and you are going to crinkle that guy onto your wet area. Notice how there are some white spaces where there's air being trapped in between the plastic. That's the effect that we're trying to do. And here's the thing. Once you put down your plastic, you got to leave it alone. So I'm actually going to lift this up and press down to make some better texture look here because when this guy is completely, completely dry, those high and low areas underneath the plastic in between the paint are going to leave that pattern on your paper. I'm using a plastic Ziploc bag and this plastic is really rigid and doesn't want to stay put. So it's probably going to pop off, but you guys get the idea. So when it's dry, oh, it's actually staying. It will leave that pattern. So I'm going to, the trick with that, leave it alone once you put it down. Okay. So I'm going to do another wash. I'm going to put it up here. I'm just going to quickly put some paint down and try not to disturb that saran wrap. Some more water. Okay. This next technique is called blotting. So taking a paper towel or a, um, a facial tissue or a Kleenex 
you're going to take a piece. Mine's pretty dirty, as you can tell. I've been watercoloring. You're going to scrunch it up, and you're going to press down on that wet area, lift up. What is going to be taken out, my camera kind of is freaking out right now, is there's going to be an obvious white area. So that paper towel or Kleenex is lifting out that wet color. And so what it leaves behind is this texture. This is a really awesome technique to be used for backgrounds or if you want to make clouds. It honestly is up to you. And the cool thing is as the paper is drying, you can continue to lift out color and just to see what else that's going to do. I love blotting. It's super pretty and I love it with my own personal work. Okay. All right. We are going to do another color. Actually, I'm going to do two here. So I'm going to fill this with a flat color. And remember those crayons that I had you do? You're going to use that once this is completely dry. Okay. So I'm laying down my color. Okay, and I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. So I'm going to hit pause and then I'll come, we'll come back when that is completely dry. Okay, so <clears throat> this area is mostly dry, but I'm going to move on. So I just had a little bit of washi tape and I actually cut this out in the shape of a heart and I'm going to stick that on my paper. It may not stick. Remember that crayon I asked you to maybe grab? Take your crayon. And draw around that stuck area. What we are doing is a resist. Resist is where you are making a protective barrier of that layer of paper. Okay, now that we did that, we're then going to take a layer of paint and paint over that area. Okay, let's see what happens. The areas that are covered up by the wax are not going to get the pigment or the paint on it. So this can be a really cool effect if you're wanting to do like something kind of cool or unique. Okay. So if I was going to take off that heart, of course, if the heart was actually sticking, it would work. But my paper is still a little wet. But imagine there would have been a little heart silhouette there. So that is a resist. You can use tape or you can use... Um, uh, wax crayons. The thing if you were, I think maybe colored pencils will work, but you'll need to test it out first. Um, because what you're looking for is that waxy part that's in um, a kind of colored crayon or a colored pencil. Okay. So the remaining spaces of your page, I want you to combine various watercolor techniques. So if you're wondering again what I we learned today, it is this. So we did a gradient wash, color lift out, a tilted wash, salt, wet on dry, wet on wet, blotting, Saran wrap is still drying and we did resist. Oh, there is one more I forgot to mention. This one can be a little tricky. So you are going to load up your brush with some color and then you're going to wipe it off towards mostly like dry. Okay. Then you're going to take your brush and you are going to make it parallel with your paper. And then you're going to move your brush back and forth. What this is called is dry brushing. Dry brushing is where the paint is actually going to very lightly touch the surface of the paper. And it's going to make this kind of textured effect. This is really fun to do to make clouds. It can also be layered on top. So let's say if I was going to do this again, but really heavy up on the paint and do it the opposite direction. Try and keep your bristles together too. This one is a little trickier than all the other watercolor techniques because it's how do you control your brush. So the remaining spaces on your page, I want you to combine watercolor techniques. I've taught you about what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different techniques. Combine them, experiment, see what works, what doesn't work. But until then, we'll continue watercoloring in class. So I'll see you then. Good luck.